I'm, I'm wondering if really there's no other option on whether or not this option is the best that we have right now. Because if you look at, you know, we, we, we are hearing, you know, stories about moles within the security uh, architecture that we have, you know, where sometimes they, you know, they leak information, they provide information, you know, they seem to be collaborators with these terrorists. And, and when you hear things like that, you know, and then troops are ambushed and killed and all of that. How do we tackle this? How does the president, uh, how does the president attack? He's the chief security officer. This is a retired military general, a retired military general. He has fought a war. He has led a whole division. The president, the president should give you the answer and not me. If there's a failure to secure citizens, the first port of call is the president. How come the military See, leave civilians, ordinary people. I'm, I'm sorry, I don't mean you, but you are generalists, so maybe you know a little bit more than they. How, how is it that we, we citizens know that there are serious problems within our military, and the man who is supposed to fix that problem is not fixing it? Is that an excuse for him? If, if can a president who is the commander in chief of the armed forces say, uh, there's nothing I can do. The military leaks secrets. There are moles. Um, the military is collaboration with criminals. Why don't you? What do you do about it? What are you supposed to do? You have all the powers in the world to fix the problems within the military. You, the commanders have access to you. The service chiefs have access to you. You appointed them. If they fail, they can't keep secrets secrets. If they can't. Uh, impose discipline, do something about them. You know, with all the powers that the president has, um, others have spoken about <clears throat> the strategies that we are using to deal with this. Uh, there are analysts who have also said that, well, this, this warfare is it's an asymmetric warfare. It's not something that, you know, Nigeria has had to deal with, you know, in the past. And so there are fears of, you know, collateral damages. Uh, sometimes there is this unwillingness to, to really go after the bandits, especially when they are within communities and within villages. And so there's this fear that, okay, if we go very heavy and maybe uh, drop bombs on them, there will be collateral damage, damages, innocent uh, civilians will be killed in the process. Or sometimes uh, you have situations where even in the camps, they have people that they have abducted. And so there's the fear that let's not just, you know, rain that kind of heavy fire so that we don't lose you know, innocent people. What do you say to that? You see, you do either of two things. One is to explore other ways of dealing with the issue without necessarily jeopardizing the victims or reducing the damage, the potential damage. The other one is to do exactly what he's doing now. I'm not going to do anything. My, my military can't fight. Oh, my military is not willing to fight. My military doesn't know how to fight this war. Um, my military, it's, it is not a problem that has no solution. There is a solution. I'm not, we are not suggesting that you can fix banditry and kidnapping overnight. But let's do something. Let's see something being done. Let people in their villages stop dying. Look, quite possibly 20% or 25% of the villages in Kasena uh, will, no, will no grow anything this year because they've been abandoned in Kaduna State, in, in, uh, in Zamfara State, in Sokoto State. If we're talking about the Northwest, you're talking about almost a third of the population that is either running or living in IDP camps or living with relations, they wouldn't farm. Dr. Ahmed. This is a crisis of monumental dimension. We are talking about millions of people. Don't you think if the president met the only real existential threat when he became president was Boko Haram and some remnants of militancy because President uh, Eradua had, had dealt with that substantially. But look at where we are now. It's not just that people are dying at the, at the, on, on, the, in the, on the interest of citizens. The people are dying simply because there's just nothing to protect them. Now, who do you go back to? Uh, Dr. Ahmed. Should we just blame the system? The system is, is an amorphous, abstract thing. The system is made up of people. The people. These people are led by leaders. Our leaders are not protecting us. The leader is one person, and he's the president. So when, when, you, when you defend well, us... Is it not unfair?